everyone, and welcome to another episode of Truth Talks. I'm excited to bring to you a conversation between myself, Brody, and Mark. These are two of our competition prep clients who will be competing in the Summer Shredding 2024 show. And the cool thing about this episode is that we have Mark who will be competing in the transformation category, and then we have Brody who will be competing in men's physique. And in this episode, we really highlight the contrast between their two situations and their journeys, as well as highlighting the similarities. And you'll see, regardless of where you are in your fitness journey, there are a lot of parallels. So I'm excited to bring to you this episode and please sit back, relax. And if you're watching, watch. And if you're listening, listen, and we'll see you on the inside. All right, and we are live. Welcome to another episode of this time, Truth Talks. Uh, so we've done the Adonis Project more recently, and now we are hopping back into an episode of Truth Talks because we are going to introduce you to two of our competition prep clients that you haven't seen before. We got Brody and also Mark. And in this podcast, I want to give a little bit of a story for each of them as to like why they're in prep, what they want out of this journey, and maybe kind of the, the positive benefits that prep has instilled in their life so far. And we might have a couple other members popping in so far uh, from the prep team. So we'll, we'll see it. We'll see if they if they make it in. But uh, I guess we'll, we'll start left to right on my screen. Mark, Give us uh, an update. What's going on? Give us just a brief summary of who you are for people that don't know you. I know you've been on the podcast one time before, but just brief summary, general synopsis. Well, hey, first of all, thanks for having me here. It's great to be here. Um, I'm, I'm just looking at this, my screen here, and I, I kind of feel like the, the the kid that's being invited to the uh, the big boys table here or something. <laughs> but um, yeah, so. Uh, my story, um, I am 52 years old. Uh, I've got twin daughters. Um, they're 13 now. And about two years ago, um, I was just not like in the shape I was in. Um, 255 pounds, 40% body fat. You know, that's over 100 pounds of fat I was carrying around. And uh, sleep apnea eating a machine at night to help me breathe and i it was just not going down a, a, a good direction so started um i got on the on on paris's program here and uh since then um down about 75 pounds or closing in on 75 pounds uh body fats still a little bit higher than you know i'd like hovering around 24 percent now um but yeah, I'm just uh, I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm looking forward to you know what can still happen over the next five and a half weeks before summer shred. And uh, yeah, just really enjoying the ride right now. Amazing, amazing. Thank you, Mark. And we're going to dive a bit more into that for sure. Uh, but first, Brody, top right. What's going on? I give a, a little bit of introduction. This is your first time ever on the podcast, yeah, so I'm, ever. So, I'm so nervous, guys. I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> just want to say, uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for having me on, Paris. And uh, Mark, my brother, actually has had twin daughters uh, last year. So that's pretty cool. Really? And it's pretty cool to see uh, him growing up and him turning as a father. It's, uh, it's a pretty cool thing to see. So that's awesome. Um, but yeah, what, uh, what started me here was like, I've been working out and training for a long time. Um, I'm currently the manager at the Good Life Fitness Oakville Trafalgar location. And that's how I met Paris. Paris is always in there training. So me and him run into each other all the time and Paris is a social butterfly. So like I was kind of saying right before the podcast, uh, but yeah, so we were kind of chatting and uh, I've been training all the time, but I just, uh, I kind of lost the consistency and the, the accountability. And since COVID it's been really hard to just get back into, um, you know, just taking training really seriously. Um, as some of my colleagues would say, uh, Brody's just around farting around, you know, lifting weights here and there, and he's not like really super dedicated. Um, so I told Paris that I wanted to get back into a physique prep and a, and a show. And I did one uh, about seven to eight years ago. And uh, I kept telling him I was going to do it, kept telling him I was going to do it. And then he kept on me and I was like, all right, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it with Paris and we're going to do it together. And then uh, a couple months went by and I was like, all right, now's the time to do it. I want to really dial everything back in and, and, and really, uh, you know, put everything I can to this, to this prep. I think the big, the big reason why, um, I would just say like, I always like identify as a fitness person. I started when I was really young and I felt like in the last couple of years, I haven't felt 
like that fitness person. If I'm, if I'm running a gym, I'm always meeting people and I'm training people. I felt like I needed to really like feel like I'm that person and lead by being that person. Uh, so I felt like the bigger reason why behind me really wanting to start and compete was to lead by example. And, you know, it's, it's uh, the competing and everything is just, it's fun to do, but I don't expect to get a pro card or anything like that out of it. It's more so I just want to like push myself past my own beliefs and limits and then lead by example. I love that, man. I love that. Um, before I say something, Mark, I think we might be getting a little bit of uh, echo on the higher side, maybe in between talking, maybe just mute yourself. Sorry. <laughs> but we're, we're good. We're good. Um, so Brody, I kind of like that you mentioned that kind of identity piece, you know, and I think it's, over time we can like shift our identities but if you kind of if you put yourself in your mind as like a fitness person and then you start to get pulled away from that you almost just don't feel right on a daily basis right mm -hmm. there's almost like you feel like a little bit of imposter not only to not really to the people around you but to yourself you're like okay this is not really who i am and uh, there's almost that not living up to the full potential and that's something that i remind you i think uh, pretty frequently i'm pretty tough on brody when it comes to uh <laughs> like checking his boxes and stuff like that because of his potential and I, I see like such an enormous potential and that's why i am pretty hard on brody harder than i am on on most clients um <laughs> for to be completely honest um but i think it just goes to show like whenever we are not operating maybe at a level that we know that we can it's not to anybody else but just kind of like feeling like we let ourselves down so i think hopping in this prep with you is like prove something to yourself if yeah. i'm not mistaken right 100 percent, 100 percent. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And Mark, tap us into your uh, why. Obviously, you got a great why, but I want to talk about more specifically, like for the competition, like what is your reason for this summer shredding, which we'll talk about your category in a second, but give us a rundown on that. Yeah. So for the for the competition, I think for me, um, in in things that I've done in the past, so I, I used to I used to run a lot. Um, and I always like to have a goal that I was working towards and kind of a, something in the distance that would keep me motivated. So when it was when I was doing a lot of running, it'd be like I'd, I'd sign up for a marathon six months, eight months down the road. And that really kind of helped keep me focused. Um, and so with, with the summer shred, when you said, hey, there's a, a competition, there's a category for you. When you start talking about a show, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like uh, buddy, have you seen my, my arms? <laughs> but, you know, you said, okay, there's a transformation category, and this is what it's about. It's just a celebration. I said, you know what? That sounds like something I can do. And, you know, kind of having that point out in the future, it seemed a lot further away <laughs> um, when you first started talking about it um, than just the five weeks that it is now. And, oh, sorry, if I'm back on mute. Yeah, you're good. I'm good? Okay. Um, it was just having that 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 point in the distance to keep working towards to keep the motivation up and you know it, it really has helped make easier decisions like I've, I've always said you know kind of the working out for me is the easy decision i get up early in the morning and i work out the tough this the tough part is the nutrition for me it's like because that's five six times a day you have to make a good decision and so opening the cupboard and seeing all right someone bought a bag of chips into the house you know, it's a lot easier to say no to that when you think I'm going to be on stage in a couple of weeks. <laughs> I can't have any of that right now. So it's it's really helped keep me focused, and that's the kind of stuff that I that personally I need to have those those kind of points out there, those events coming up. I like that. I like that. That's it's staying accountable. Well, you obviously have accountability to like yourself and to me, but I think staying accountable to the goal of the show right like no matter what you do in your day always at the back of your mind it's like everything affects my journey on onto the stage right and that's like a checkpoint a very important checkpoint in the journey um and for anybody that doesn't know the transformation division so this division is more about the story so a lot of times people have maybe had i don't know there's people that have had cancer that recovered and got an amazing shape or uh, we're drug addicts or de depressed or a lot of times it's very o overweight or obese and then they get healthy and they completely change their lifestyle and they tell the story um of how they got from kind of their starting point to where they are now in a much healthier spot so 
it is all about the story of the transformation division. And I think Mark has a great story. And I said, you would be doing everybody else a disservice if you didn't share this. Because a lot of people, they're they're almost like ashamed of their starting point. So they want to hold it too close to their chest and not tell anybody. Because or they don't even want to look at their starting photos. They're like, I'm so disgusted by the way I started, right? But you're doing the service to all those people out there that are similar to where you started and deserve to also go on their own journey. And by not sharing, they don't know that this stuff's possible. But when you say, hey, listen, I re I can relate to this person. You know, Mark did this. Oh, my gosh. This is where he started. This is where he's at now. It makes it a lot more realistic and feasible in their mind when they see somebody else do it first, right? You know, that's exactly right. And just um, for me, trying to be an example for my daughters is huge and two years ago i was not an example of healthy living a healthy lifestyle health making good choices and since they started seeing the results um you know they're asking questions about food choices they're in the gym with me a couple nights a week like they're going on the treadmill they're working their abs they're um <clears throat> they're they're just they're starting to embrace it as part of their lifestyle at 13, which I think is awesome. They both play competitive hockey. So, you know, it, it's just, it, I can see it's helping them on the ice as well, too. And then the other thing, too, is just friends and family. Like both my sisters are now working with Paris as well. Um, one of them has already, she's dropped, what is she up to? She's 45, 60 pounds. Well, she's, she's close up to there 60, as well. Yeah. yeah. And um, my other sister is just, started i think today was her first workout and but she's gung-ho and it's just um seeing the positive influence it has on everyone around you and or it's had on people around me just it feels feels really great as yeah i call it the positive ripple effect and i know you've had a lot of that in your your life mark and i'm curious brody like since you started prep a bit more seriously obviously like your story is a lot different than mark and that's why i think this is so cool because it highlights uniqueness between you guys but also a lot of contrast which i think is is powerful in its own way um so brody along this way i know mark was talking about the effect kind of like it's had on on family and friends and different things like that have you found a similar kind of ripple effect now that you've taken even things up a notch in your in your fitness journey yeah i think just to what you said is like there is a lot of commonalities because i feel like we both feel like we want to identify as something that currently we weren't and this gave us kind of that that reason why to to really level up and i think the best thing you can do for everybody else in your surroundings is level up yourself because you are a direct impact to all those people around you so if you really want to be a positive influence to your social circle and and just your community i think it starts with really leveling up yourself so people number one don't have to worry about you but also you can provide and and help other people around in your sort uh, circle as well um so yeah i mean I think uh, that's really important and it's interesting how we both kind of feel the exact same way uh, in that regard. Yeah, I think that is really powerful. And and the Brody, I mean, your your competition season is all already like well underway. We've already done two shows. So, you know, before I go back to Mark, maybe give us a little bit of rundown of like what's happened so far and a little bit of summary and then what's coming up. Because we, we do have summer shredding, but we also have something else that's cool. So maybe give us a little bit of rundown. Yeah, so we did uh, two shows. Um, we did the Toronto Naturals, which I placed third in, and then we did um, the London Naturals right after, um, which I placed fourth in. I thought I looked uh, actually a lot better in the, the show afterwards, but we didn't place quite as good. But I was really happy with um, the package I brought, the posing. I think we made really good adjustments. Um, and I think a big part of that is like, you're learning along the way. so. Being able to like, I think this prep has really taught me like drop the ego, let's be willing to listen uh, and actually like be your own biggest critic in terms of like, you have to be able to look at the situation objectively and be like, okay, this is what I could do better uh, and just take it for what it is. And, and a big thing is too, is that there is a lot of subjectivity to these shows and competitions. So you can't let what one guy thinks about you and just judging you on a stage and let that ruin your mood. Cause re realistically it's not, it should never be about that. It should always be about leveling up and 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 really finding that passion and just pushing yourself a little bit further every day. So, um, yeah, we did the last, the first uh, two shows so far. Um, I think they're what four to five weeks apart. How much apart? Yeah, were they? yeah uh, like three weeks. 
Yeah. yeah. So we actually prepped since uh, basically December. So it was, a, it was pretty much like a six month prep for me to get to this first uh, show, which was the Toronto Nationals. And um, I think I dropped maybe like 18 pounds. Um, really just got the diet back in track, uh, started lifting more strategically with more intention and purpose, um, prioritizing sleep, all of those kinds of things. So just trying to really, really build those habits back. And I think even still now, I'm still building the habits even stronger and everything's becoming more concrete. So even leading into this next show, um, which is August 3rd, that's going to be the, uh, the qual the pro qualifier. Um, I feel like, honestly, I'm super happy with where we're at. And, um, I think like in terms of diet, which is my biggest struggle as well, I like how you mentioned, uh, having to check or had to make that decision five times in a day. And to me, yeah, as you're right, it's like, yeah, having to consciously be like, okay, no, maybe this isn't the best choice. Maybe let's, let's actually put the, the food in the app first and see what my macros end up coming at. And then I can make that decision if this is the right meal to, to have. So being ahead of that is pretty interesting and, uh, and all that, but, uh, but yeah, so we have the Toronto pro, uh, qualifier coming up and then we have the, uh, transformation division for the, uh, summer shredding, which I have no, I don't really know what to expect in that at all. I have no idea what the posing's like, what they're looking for, what, what the show is like. So that'll be pretty cool and interesting. And it's pretty cool that we have five of us, I believe competing in it. Right. Yeah. Well, so, so this is funny. This is funny. We're doing this on podcast, you're, you're, yeah, yeah. So yeah Mark's, in, yeah, Mark's in transformation division and so will Anita, his sister. And then, uh, you, Brian, me and Manene will be in the uh, fit body physique, which is a new category as well, which some people might not know. It's like men's physique, but it's natural because the thing about summer shredding is it's an untested show, which means that, you know, we'll call it, it's a pretty juicy show. Like we went to go watch last year <laughs> and there were some, uh, you know, there's quite a bit of drug use in the division. So in order to make it a fair playing field, which I completely respect, they introduced a drug tested category called fit body. And that's where we will be competing in. And, and, uh, so yeah, Brody after he's got nationals and then he's got this one. So just getting better every single show, not only with the physique, well with the physique, but because of the habit in ingrainment, I would say, if that's a word, right? Like you, you're kind of dialing in your variables as we go th throughout prep, because there were certain skills that I would have almost liked to have us to build like before prep, we kind of mm -hmm. built them along the way, which is okay too. And we kind of figured out along the way. Um, but I think those are continuing to be refined. And I always tell Brody, if we get the conditioning and like posing, we worked on a sh uh, crap ton, which, which came up a lot. He's got a mm -hmm. lot of muscle mass and density. If we bring the conditioning, he's got great stage presence. If we bring the conditioning, it's game over, especially from the back pose. Only yeah. guy who can match you is Manene, and hopefully he's not even in your high class. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so it's just kind of like looking at that. And again, that's why I say I push Brody hard because it's like we got nationals. We're, the people are going to be flying. Best physiques from all around Canada are going to be flying in. So yeah. it's like we're going to bring the heat, and he can damn well stand next to those guys and look the part and be competitive. So that's why, you know, that's pretty cool. So I love that, Brody. Really, really good stuff. Um, and I guess we'll, we'll change the chapter back to Mark here. Uh, Mark, hearing kind of the mindset, I know you listen to a lot of the other podcasts and, and anything. Was there anything that stood out to you about, like, the mindset along with prep that you find, uh, like, you resonate with? Yeah, you know, it, it's funny. Um, like just talking about the you know the, the suffering, the dedication, the mindset about having to, you know, being focused. And so, um, at first, I was listening to him going, "Well, these guys, they're 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 in a different league. They're <laughs> you know they're big guys. It's like it's, it doesn't really kind of apply to me." But I thought about it, and I, I remember when I was when I was doing marathons, you know. 16, 17 years ago now, I remember a quote from a, it was a famous marathoner, and, and I'm going to paraphrase it a bit because I don't remember exactly what he said, but he, he said, listen, if you trained as hard as you can, if you dedicated yourself to it, and you gave, you gave everything you had on race day, then you and I ran the same race. And I'm like, you know what, that's, I, I was thinking about that, thinking, okay, so these guys are bigger, they're stronger, but the process that we're going through is the same. Like, we're, we're you know, I'm giving it everything I can. Um, 
daily basis. I'm, I'm dedicated to the process. I'm checking off my boxes every day. And it's like, yeah, I'm in a different category. For me, it's a bit more of a celebration of transformation than, the, than competition. But, you know, it's, it's still, we've all kind of got the same dedication and, and goal here, right? It just put together the best package you can on, on that day. So, hundred um, percent. I yeah. love that quote. That's awesome. I'm going to steal that from you. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll give I'll you credit. Who, I'll figure out who wrote it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We should give them credit. I think yeah. the cool thing about that, Mark, is like, even for myself, like, you know, you might look and say like, wow, Paris physique, whatever. But like, I'm doing the same thing to the guys at these shows. And I, like I am genetically not nearly as gifted as most of the people at fitness competitions because the guys that show up are typically very genetically blessed because that's what motivates them. Oh, I'm genetically blessed. I respond very well to exercise. Probably going to be more likely that they would get into competing, but like structurally and like, you know, physique wise, like I'm not really built for men's physique. Like, ah, I look decent, but like I'm not main for competing. So even if you compare me to Brody and Manene and like the guys I was on stage next to like, you know, there, there, there are ways ahead of me, but like, it doesn't bother me because just as you said in that quote, it's like, I'm still putting in the same amount of work, probably in some cases uh, more than a lot of the other competitors. So I'm in my own, I'm in my own lane. And the only guy I'm really competing against is, is, is myself in that case. So I think it's easy to compare and say, oh, this, so-and-so, this, so-and-so, that, but like, at the end of the day, as you said, you're running your own race. We're all running, we're all, all running our own race kind of thing. Uh, or I guess it, in your case, you said it was like kind of, we all ran the same race, but like in our own little lanes kind of thing, right? So I think that's really, really cool. Um, awesome, awesome. Brody, I, I also want to get, speaking of comparison game, when we went to that first show, because we- I want to say, I want to say, Paris, yeah. I think you're being a little modest here with your physique. You have a great physique, so I don't know what you're saying. So you're being a little <laughs> modest you. here. And you have you. I think you can put a lot of more muscle on your frame as well. And I think mm -hmm. in the next few years, you're going to see that, and you're you're going to blow yourself out of the water with how good you're going to look. Thank you, dude. That means a lot. Yeah, I recognize I'm still young, and I got years on my side. Um, that's the good thing. I got a lot of time. I mean, Brody's like six years older than I am, so <laughs> you know, I got some time. But yeah, thanks, man. I and we're also our own worst critic too, right? Like at the end of the day. But um, yeah, I think. Um, yeah. Oh, what was it? Oh, yeah. The comparison game. So, so Brody, going into that first show, we saw some pretty, pretty legendary looking physiques there. So, going into that, did that kind of light a little bit of a fire for you, like seeing the standard of these physiques, especially now that you're going to the national level? Like, now that you know the standard, like, how does how does that make you feel? Did that give you a little more? Oomph? Yeah, I think there's so many mixed feelings on that day. It's like. You feel pretty good about yourself and then you go in the tanning room where you see everybody getting tanned up and then you're not tanned and then they're tanned and they look incredible and you're like damn these guys look really good <laughs> and then it plays with your head a little bit and then you go backstage and you see a couple guys that just look insane manene being one of them you look at manene backstage and then you have four other people coming up to him and going dude you look incredible you're gonna win this you look sick and it's true he does he look good he looks insane um so being able to just like not let that bug you at all or mm -hmm. just like affect you at all and still just like you're exactly you're in your own race you came here you you came here to, to step on stage and do your own thing and just compare yourself to yourself that's all that matters so like you just got to be able to block all of that um out of your head and just be able to go out and do what you got to do uh so that's like the first thing i want to say about that <laughs> yeah. um but 100 like i'm not even like really looking at the other people it's like I'm looking at the first show I did and what needs to get better. And I think on the second show date that we did, I definitely got a lot better on a lot of the things. The posing was better. I like the stage presence better. The trunks were better. Um, I felt like I hit my angles better. I, my conditioning was better. Yep. And now for the next show, it's, it's what, what do we need to tweak on the poses? What do I need to tweak in terms of conditioning? But again, it's like, it's all going to come down to one or two guys deciding if I win or not. And it's, that's not going to affect anything in terms of my preparation and what I need to do to bring the best package of myself. And it's not going to um, affect me after the show is done either. So I think just uh, you need to just compare yourself to yourself at the end of the day and don't even think about or look at the other people. Cause if you, if you, as soon as you play the comparison game, you you're, you're already going to lose to yourself. Like you're going to be, you're going to get in your head. It's going to be too much. Uh, and it's going to discourage you. So. Because there's always going to be somebody that looks better. There's always going to be somebody stronger, smarter, whatever. So, yep. 
I think that's an awesome mindset. I really like how you touched on it's not going to affect how you feel about yourself coming out of the show because, you know, some people get into competing for the wrong reasons and they do to fill a void, right? Uh, insecurity or something versus like to grow, see the personal growth. They do it to like fill a gap instead of building on themselves. And I think at that point, do you see some competitors that are just crushed that they didn't win or didn't place? And then they go in like a binge fest of eating or whatever and self loathing. So I think that's great that you framed your mindset even before the show. It's like, hey, listen, I'm going to control my controllables, come in and focus on improving. But like, regardless of what happens, it doesn't change the way I feel about myself or how I prepare or anything like that. I think that's something, you know, preach it for the people in the back, say it a bit louder, you know, because like a lot of competitors really don't have that, that mindset dialed in. Um, Mark, yeah, we, we've, we've, seen some guys, sorry to you off. we've seen some guys get a little pissy about it too, when they don't place very well, right? Paris, <laughs> we've seen a couple, yeah, we did. A couple cases. So. <laughs> it's very true. It happens, man. It happens. You see these massive muscular guys like complaining, like we're five-year-olds on soccer practice and we didn't get the ball and score. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's like it's insane <laughs> but uh mark kind of hearing that perspective on comparison and staying in your in kind of your own goals is that like you know give you some reassurance that like okay you know regardless like i'm doing my thing and, and make give, give you a bit more confidence to kind of like fulfill your journey oh yeah absolutely and you know what for me it's just um it's kind of a, a celebration of the journey right just another celebration of far how far i've come but at the same point it's just it's still kind of just uh you know, milestone along the way, because this the journey is far from over. Journey is far from over, but you know, it's a it's a milestone. It'd be a fun time, have some family there, and um, yeah, I you know, at the end of the day, I'm just trying to you know be the, the best that I can. And I know there's going to be people there. Like I've, I've seen some of the, the transformation videos from past years. And it's like. I know there's going to be someone that's been hit by a bus and <laughs> has dragged themselves to the gym for the past two, three years. And uh, it's like, okay, well, yeah, you know what? <laughs> that's give it to him. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. The story, the story, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, no, it, it, it's great to hear that. That, you know, um, you know, even in your categories, that you guys are just like, just trying to be the best that you can be, which is what we're already trying to do at the end of the day, I think. Mm -hmm. I like that, guys. I really like that. I, I want to almost dive into a little bit of like perspectives and prep on maybe some things that you didn't expect when starting diving into this journey a little bit more. Um, because we all have certain um conceived notions on like, okay, how's this prep gonna go? What am I gonna be doing? How how's the, the sequence of events gonna be going? Um, so I wanna maybe hear. And we can jump it back back to Brody for a second of like, you know, what did, did the preps go a little bit differently than you expected? Like, how, was there any differences or was it pretty much as expected? Or how do you feel about that? It's mm. a good question. <laughs> Different than I expected. Yeah, I'd say so. I thought it was going to be more like, I, th I think I've done a really good job, but you know, I think in my head, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do all this very easily. I'm going to show up and look very, you know, incredible. And the body fat's going to come off because I'm I'm doing all the things I need to do. And I think it's just like it comes down to you got to realize things take longer than you think it's going to. It just takes it's a long process. And don't think things are going to happen in 30 days, 60 days, because, yeah, you get in your head about comparing yourself to what other people are doing or what you see online. You think it's like this is going to come quick, but. I think for me, yeah, it maybe felt like things were going to come quicker. I think that's what I, I would say in terms of expecting, but um, no, because I've prepped before and everything. So I know what the trainings, you know, I know what the training entails. I know what the, the diet's going to entail and all that. But I think just the results coming faster is always what you want, but you have to just be level headed with it and understand like you are making progress week to week. And that's what really matters. So I'd probably just say, uh, in, in that regard just quick results yep yep and i think that's the thing about uh prep I, is people think they should do it as a sprint and and you know in unnatural bodybuilding a lot of times they do prep for much shorter periods of time because when you have certain anabolic support we'll say you can be more assertive and just lose a body fat and keep all the all the gains and even make some right but the the it changes when you're natural like it has to be 
uh, almost like a very calculated methodical way of like okay we got to keep the muscle but we got to take off all the body fat right and that's why it's a game it's not just weight loss it's it's a whole different beast than just a normal fat loss phase right and also when you are pushing yourself to uh low low levels of body fat you can't rush that i always use the the analogy of like you can't just drop a brick and smash it on the ground it needs to be like a feather you need to coax yourself down there just like when you're landing a plane the pilot doesn't just die vomiting crash landing they like slowly glide you feel yourself kind of lightly touch down it's the same thing with getting to it exactly it's the same thing with getting to a very low body fat percentage right yeah everybody claps at the end (laughs) regardless right Uh, but um you got to coax yourself into those low levels of body fat percentage when you are competing at that level because let me tell you the standard of leanness nowadays is absolutely insanity um so you can't just die bomb i think a lot of people as i've said many times think they have a lot less body fat on them than they actually do and think it's going to take much less time to get as lean as you need to get for for to be competitive in these shows than it will take right so i think that's some some good perspectives uh i'll kind of give give my my perspective too i guess before we jump into mark um i think i had a, a you know some experience competing as well before but i think um one belief that was uh broken during this prep was how low my training volume can actually go well retaining muscle mass uh we've used a lot of different techniques like lengthened work uh at my, my coach's program and before the 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 show my volume was very very low uh, like you'd be surprised uh how low my volume was but my training intensity and how calculated i was with that and how intentional i was for my sets um you know we still retained a lot of muscle but and you again you'd be very surprised at how low my training volume so i think that's one belief that i had it's like hey if you're intentional with your training like you probably don't need as much volume as you think if the work is quality quality right um so that's that's my learning for me from this prep specifically mark what about you I think some of the some of the things that are, are popping into mind for me are um, just how how well the process works when you give yourself over to it. Um, I, you know, my weight came off a couple months ago. It was coming off pretty quickly, and then it stalled. And um, I remember Paris saying, "It hey, will come off. We're going to take your your." You're, uh, we're going to go into maintenance phase, and once you come out of that, your weight will come off again. And you know, I, I don't know if I really trusted the process then, because <laughs> I'd be saying, "Hey, Paris, I went up to town, man. I, I'm I'm not eating carbs tomorrow." <laughs> I, you know, I could almost hear him shaking his head. <laughs> saying, no, no, no. Just stick. Just keep checking off the boxes. Hit your targets, and. Um, you know, there's there's kind of a bit of having to give yourself over to the process and trust in the process, and not taking you know will into my own hands. It's like, well, no, Paris says do this, it'll work, and just you know, the kind of the level of of trust or just having faith in the process, I guess, is a little bit uh, um. Not, not not surprising, but um, it was a, it was an adjustment for me, right? You know, just just saying, okay, you know what? He's got it. He says this is going to work. I'll just keep <laughs> doing what he says to do. And you know, sure enough, a, a couple of days will go by where it's like, okay, you know what? I, I'm not losing weight right now, but I've checked off all my boxes for the past couple of days, so I know it's going to happen. I know it's going to come down. And then sure enough, you step on scale one day, it's like, okay, well, there's a pound, pound and a half off. All right, so it works. It works. Just got to keep with it. Stick with it, and it'll happen. It's just, I always tell you guys, check your boxes. Just do it. Just what's on paper, just do it. It's there for a reason. And I understand that you're putting a lot of trust in me. I do the same thing with my coach, right? Like, I understand there's a lot of trust, and that's why I don't take it lightly. But everything is programmed for a reason. And like for Mark, I was telling him we did take a maintenance phase because you're not going to drop 75 pounds of body fat in one, one street. Okay. Not a smart idea. Okay. So we took a big chunk off and I, I kept telling him every second, Hey Mark, just so you know, we're going to have a maintenance phase coming up. We're going to be bringing up food. I even phrased it as a muscle up phase. So it sits easier in, in with the psychology. Right. Mm-hmm um and i kept reminding him you know i i because i almost had to sell on the idea and even then he's like okay well are we going to be putting on body fat i'm like no no it's just coming to maintenance and trust me after 
we hold steady here on the other end of it the fast just gonna fly off you and what do you know took that refresher phase and then whoop on the other side of that new 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 physique prs right so like it's just i understand that there's a lot of trust and that's again why i don't take things lightly when i like with coaching but um i think it's just being okay giving up that control as well as i think we had talked about even on on sunday markers just like being okay with giving up that control and like saying hey this is the process as long as i check the boxes that are written down i should be at peace there's nothing more you need to do other than the action items that are outlined every day and every week if you do those that's it just do your homework right yeah yeah so really yeah. cool stuff to add to that paris i think that's probably been the hardest thing is to like give up the full control of like trusting the whole process and and following everything to a t especially when you you know you feel like you've you've you know you've been exercising and, and training and, and everything and you feel pretty comfortable about everything you've been doing to be able to just give up what you feel like you know works to try something new mm -hmm. you know, like that old man's mindset it's like no this is how it's supposed to happen and it's supposed to be and i don't need to listen to anything i think uh that was the hardest thing for me, but I think I've been doing a good job of it and I feel pretty happy with me being able to do that. Yeah, I can say you've definitely come a long way in that front Brody for sure. Um, like I expected more pushback from you to be completely honest than, than I've gotten, I guess, throughout, throughout the process. Um, but that's the only way that we truly level up is being open. Again, there's lots of new training methods and uh, diet structure that are new to me that my coaches put on this prep that coincides with many of the principles I would have done anyways, but there's some that I wouldn't have done. Like, for example, I wouldn't have dug myself that hard as we did before the first show with my calories and stuff like that. Right. Um, or have gone as low in training volume, like those things, but it's on paper, I'm hitting it. And it just, you just make the decision that you're just going to trust whatever is given. And you're just going to execute it. Just like no questions asked. I, well, you can ask questions of course, but like, there's a, there's a rhyme to the reason of why the process is the process. And I think for a lot of people like yourself, Brody, who have a lot of knowledge and have a lot of like development and you know, already been in the game for a long time, they do have that, as you said, that like stubborn mindset, but that's, but those are, it's, it's tough because those are also the people that can really become crazy elite competitors but they what's holding them back is that mm -hmm. little bit of ego and stubbornness to like not give the reins away and i i think that i wish there was more people who are really far in the game that would get external guidance that don't um and i just think like they don't know what that next level is because maybe they've shut the door to like listening into new methods and new protocols too right so ego as it, the book says and that manana loves ego is the enemy right <laughs> yeah yeah Oh, I want to ask you just a question for you, Paris. Um, yeah. Just in comparison from your first show, or the last show you did, like not not with us, the one yeah. that you did just prior to that, to the the previous one that you you just had with us. Um, what do you think are the main changes um, for yourself that like you've really noticed from show one to to this show now, like in terms of uh, your preparation, your your attitude towards the training, the coaching, all that, et cetera. Yeah, good question. So I'll so I did do a show in um a few years before that when I was younger, but I'll I'll touch on 2022 show compared to 2024, I guess. Yeah, the um, one that is, the one that you were at my gym and you were prepping for before that. Yeah, that one. Gotcha. One yeah. So apart from the the training volume being a lot lower and a lot more length in partials and work in like those uh, we'll call them intensity techniques, we'll call them work and just training at long muscle lengths, which uh, for people that don't know, that means just when your muscles in a length of position, like getting a lot of tension in that position, which has been shown recently in research to be very stimulative of hypertrophy. So apart from those two things, I would say I've remained a lot more stoic during this, um, prep. And I also, um, learn that the mind, like once you get the mind in it, you can, you can, your body can take a lot, like you can train very hard in a very underfed state, we'll call it, and still perform well. It, But it's a skill that gets trained over time. I think this prep really showed me that, like I can dig in for a set and I don't need to lose as much strength as I think I thought I might lose. Um, and then also I can operate in my day um, with still a lot of oomph um, if I tell myself I'm okay almost. As weird as that sounds, because I do think that, you know, being in an underfed state and getting to very low body fat percentages, it takes practice. 
because the first time you do it, you're not used to it and it feels foreign and, and it's going to feel a lot more challenging. But just like anything, just like the first time you bench press, the bar feels heavy. First time you get lean, it's going to feel tough, right? Mm -hmm. But then you, you over time, you can push yourself more and more and get to leaner and leaner state. So I think for me, it's like I, I could dig in harder than I thought I could. Um, and obviously from a physique perspective, I do have quite a bit more muscle than I did last time from a coaching perspective. Um, my other coach was pretty decent too. He was, he was slightly younger than, uh, and less experienced than the coach I have now, obviously. Um, I think what I learned was he just tells me what I need to hear. Like I, I know exactly what to tell him. So I communicate exactly what I know he needs to hear. And then he just tells me a couple of snippets that I, that I need and I'm gone. Like his check-ins are like, you know, voice notes maybe three minute voice note done right mm -hmm. on a basis and and that's it and just he just tells me a couple things i need to hear that's the value i need and boom it's consider done coach you know what i mean <laughs> like <laughs> that kind of thing uh if that does that answer your question i guess long yeah yeah ago? yeah no for sure yeah you're digging deeper in the in those tough sets when uh you gotta put a bar on your back and you're six percent body fat and you don't want to be there and it's cold and exactly. you sleep well and all that exactly man <laughs> it's all right between the ears and then you do it and you're like i didn't think i could do that but i did even there was a couple sets mm -hmm. of leg press that like brody and i hit together like you gotta like those were when i was very underfed and you know i got i pretty much work from 7 a.m to 7 p.m pretty much every single day and honestly sorry tara but also a lot of weekends <laughs> and uh, and um and so you're like okay how am i going to do this all this work and then also go hit that leg day on like at that point i was on like 1600 calories right <laughs> which for me for me personally is very 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 low but then i knew brody was there hitting those leg set, sets with me and like having him there and feeding off that emotional energy and then literally convincing myself that this set will get done like just shows you man maybe i could have pushed more than i thought i can and maybe there's like another level that i can operate at that i didn't think i could and i think that's like busting through those self-limiting beliefs and we all have them i think that was uh so very good question brody but yeah like even having you there like knowing that you're beside me watching my set i'm like i'm not letting brody down by missing my freaking rep here you know what i mean so and that it's all like your mind will always hold you back your body can take a lot right yeah to piggyback off what you said though like I think part of the whole prep too um, for me is I didn't think I was going to be able to quit drinking. Mm. Like I really didn't. So, but like in this, like for the long term. So in December, that's when I really, or I think it was September when I started, but I really wanted to like add the prep to it to see like, Hey, I really want to like shut down the drinking because I felt like for me, it was affecting a lot of the other things in my life. Um, and, you know, I stopped for about 10 and a half months throughout this whole prep. And to me, that was something like, I didn't think I would ever be able to stop drinking for 10 and a half months. You know, I thought like occasional yeah. beer here or something like that. So for me, it was like the addictive thing was every day is a new day to try to push it one day further to not do it. And I felt like addiction in that and com combined with the working out and the, the training and the eating and all that. And I felt like every single day I was leveling up my mind to a new level and the body follows what the mind does, just like you said. So, yeah. um, for me, exactly. Same, same uh, mindset there. It's like every day you're just like pushing what you think is possible, like further and further. I love that, man. And dude, big props for giving up drink. Cause I know like you were at the point where maybe, you know, we're casually drinking a few nights per week or something like that. And then it's easy. It's easy for that to start impacting your life without even you admitting it to yourself. Right. But I give mad props for you having the self-awareness to like, take a step back. I mean, like this habit is not serving me. And like, then leveling up to the point where like then you don't drink for that long period of time like that takes some serious uh self-awareness and and some serious strength so props virtual props i guess <laughs> now i gotta say i did have some tequila a few weeks ago but you know I, yeah <laughs> i gotta say that but at least i stopped for 10 and a half months so for me i never thought i'd be able to do that so to me that was like one of the most proud moments for myself yeah, it's not like it's not it's a personal decision whether you decide to give up drinking forever, but it's just proving to yourself that you can live without alcohol and also probably have some good times without it too, right? Yeah. Like exactly. learning that, right? And you know, same thing I had that learning too. Cause when I was younger, I used to think it's gotta be like 
I got to go for it with the drinks or else it's not going to be a good night. But same thing here. You know, I gave up alcohol for a very long period of time to prep for these shows. Mm -hmm. And I've gone out a lot. Even when I was in Montreal, like past weekend with Tara and our friends, like we went to like three different bars a night and I was like stone cold sober. But I had a great time because yeah. I'm you make it about the people and the experience um, rather than the just the drinking, man. So I don't know. Yeah. So way to go, man. Mark, anything from that uh, that you align with or you want to add, add on to what we were kind of talking about here? Um. One of the things that I find interesting is, so I work out at home alone in my basement and the the intensity is kind of always one of the things I have in my, I'm, I'm questioning, am I pushing hard enough because I don't have other people to feed off of. And so that's why, you know, like this past Sunday when we had the, um, the workout for the, uh, with, um, with, with Gabe and you were there Paris and said, okay, you know, this is how I want you to do this. And okay, Paris is watching. I got to get in like 15 reps of this thing. <laughs> or I pick up pick up some set of dumbbells. He goes, how many going for here? And I say, well, eight to 10. And around six, it's feeling kind of heavy. I'm like, well, I pulled an eight. <laughs> I got to kind of do this now. Um, so just, just um, the idea of am I, am I bringing intensity like I can? Um, when I'm by myself and I don't have someone that's there watching or pushing, um, that that's kind of a you know, am, am I missing out on something by not not feeding off of uh, other people's energy? But um, so you know, come out of that 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 group workout, it's like okay, I know what I have to get to now for that level um, that I had in the gym on Sunday. Right? It's like yeah. okay, there, there's I can give more. I've got more to give. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And you'll see this weekend, we're going to uh, get together with, with the prep team too. And, uh, and that will also be another perspective as well, um, which will be really fun. Uh, I think I, I'm very excited for, for this weekend for anybody that knows we're, we're, we're bringing all the prep guys together to do some posing practice and have a workout and it's always good vibes. And, you know, we're really trying to build that team atmosphere with competing and make it not such a lonely sport that it is. We're trying to make it like, you know, feed off each other's energy versus isolating yourself for four, five, six, seven months and not talking to anybody or whatever. Right. Uh, so I want us. So as we wrap up towards the end of this podcast, I want us to highlight what is the one thing in the next five weeks leading up to the to summer shredding. And Brody, in your case, I guess, nationals and summer shredding. Like, what is the one thing from an action perspective that or mindset perspective that like you want to instill? So for me. It's again, just finding that peace with whatever the process entails, I'm gonna do it and don't think so much ahead. It's just like every day's a new day. All I need to do is focus on this day and be at peace. If it's low food, if it's high food, if it's a tough workout, if it's not, if I have a long day, if it's a short day, if it's raining, if it's not raining, like whatever it is, just being content with where I am and just letting it be and letting the results come. That's kind of my perspective, what I want myself to to do uh, here. So I guess we'll start Brody. What do you, what do you think for yourself? Like what's What's that coming up? To have 10 out of 10 check-ins with Paris so he's not upset with my eating. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's, it's for me, the biggest thing is I need to have my meals prepared. I need to have Sunday and Wednesday, my meals prepared for the entire week, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. If I have that done, it's not hard for me to eat the food when I have it, but the hard thing is going to the grocery store, prepping it all, putting it all together. That's my challenge. So my commitment is those things are going to be done. And I know if I check those boxes, everything else will follow. The macros will follow. I like hitting the gym. I don't mind doing my steps, all that. The hardest thing for me is prepping those meals. So for me, that's the focus. Yep. And that's what we remember. We talked about, you guys said like making decisions throughout your day. If your meals are prepped, you have zero decisions to make. Oh. You've made one decision to prep it. And now you just got to act right. Like yeah. it removes all the decision fatigue. There's no decision to be made. It's already there. You just freaking eat it. Right. And that's where planning ahead can come a long way. So I agree. I think that's, that's what's going to really put the icing on the cake on your physique is that last little bit of fat that we got to lose Brody. And that's all going to come from diet adherence. Literally mm -hmm. it. Um, Mark, how about yourself? Uh, for me, I, it's, it's checking off the boxes every day. So, you know, just keep sticking with the process and, uh you know the challenges i face are you know my kids are off for the summer and so 
there's uh, some vacation time coming up. So next week we're heading up north and it's like, okay, well, I've got boxes to check while we're up there. So closest town, we're between Minden and Halliburton. So went and checked out gyms in both those towns and like, okay, just going to uh, use those for the week while I'm up there. And because um, that's what it's going to take, right? Like I've committed to a process here and it's because I'm out of town and, you know, and enjoy some time with the family i still have boxes to check off yep yep navigating around making your environment work for you right yep. uh i think that's awesome guys Mark, you might even have to uh hop in the forest and do a, a rocky workout if uh <laughs> you, the gyms are closed or something so be prepared. <laughs> yeah well you know what i so getting in my steps up there i'm walking the other day on like these these gravel roads i'm like you know what i I should probably have some bear spray with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, probably. Yeah, and I see the Facebook posts and the from the the cottaging association saying, okay, the bear, there's a baby bear. He's at this spot, and then he's at this spot the next day. I'm like, yeah, I should be carrying something. Jeez, jeez, yeah, you'll be lifting the logs and branches as your weights now. <laughs> yeah, no, get to the gym if you can. That's awesome, guys. I got a lot of value out of this uh, discussion. And I guess, is there anything that you guys want to tell the viewers at home? I'm hoping that after shows, like after summer shredding, after uh, we'll like bring you guys back on and talk about you know how how it went, so we don't leave a cliffhanger here. But is there anything that you want to tell people at home? Um, again, we ha there's you can see the parallels between these. We, you're two people in very different contexts in your fitness journey, but there's a lot of parallels with with things as well. And there's also you know contrast. So I guess is there any anything that you want to tell the viewers at home in either either of your contexts that you think would be valuable for them? Don't compare yourself to others. Get 1% better every single day. And just know like not everything is going to be perfect. Your first week, it's like maybe a win is just getting to the gym. The second week, it's maybe you actually went grocery shopping and got healthy op options. The third week, it's like building that protein into the routine. So it's like every week, how do I get a little bit better? And whether it's nutrition, fitness, steps, movement, sleeping, whatever it is, just don't think it's like, has to be some huge change all of a sudden. It's like, what are the big rocks that I need to build upon into my routine in my life? And how do I just get a little bit better with those things um, every week? And you're not gonna have perfect weeks and that's okay. As long as you're getting better and better week to week, um, I think that's a win. 100%, staying in the game and building. Think of it as like building along the journey versus like set it and forget it, right? It's not gonna be perfect from right off the bat. I love that. Mark? yeah along the same lines i mean like on 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 your program there's uh, four boxes to check off every day a nutrition box steps workout and sleep but it doesn't have to be that way if you're just getting started just do one thing today just do one thing today that, that gets you moving in the right direction whether that's getting some steps or getting to the gym or you know making a better decision at dinner tonight you know and then you start building a little bit of momentum that way, and then it snowballs. Right? You start to see some movement, you start to see some results, and you want more. Yeah, I think that's really cool. I love that. Yeah, and also that's, have fun. Yeah. You got to have fun. Don't get too obsessive with it either. Because, like, I know we're going, we're doing a physique prep and we're getting really like obsessive with things, but mm -hmm. sometimes you need to be able to have fun. <laughs> Thank you for reminding that. That's a great reminder because, you know, I'm an I'm intense guy, but. I love this this shit excuse my french at the end of the day like i'm having fun i'll i'll hit the most hard set of, of legs on very low food and be like man that was i want to cry but inside i'm like i'm still having a good time there's something weird about it you know what i mean so like and i love i love like prepping with these guys and talking to them and seeing that and hitting the group workouts and, and chatting with them and doing check-ins like it is fun and you have to make it fun and i think if it's all just a perspective like i i'm in such a good mood even at, towards the end of prep in in some way, shape or form, just because I'm, I'm so, uh, I find so much purpose in this process. And I think that's a really good reminder though, Brody, because sometimes we do get very intense, especially with a very extreme goal, like, hey, we're gonna be competing on a national stage for physique competition. Wow, can you get more extreme than that? Other than like, you know, MMA? <laughs> Probably not, but as a sport, but, but at the end of the day, it is fun and it's not that serious. Like we're just tiny little specks on a tiny little speck amongst an abyss of space, like, 
you know, at the end of the day. So um, take it ser super seriously, but also with the perspective as like, this is all, this is all, all good, good stuff at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. I like that. Absolutely. And give all the boys crap for sleeping in today. Yeah. Where, where, <laughs> where are these guys sleeping in at seven? That's, and no, no, they didn't even respond to my message in the group chat. You know what? That's okay. Shake my head. You know what? That's it. I'm dropping all their food by 50% next week. There you go. Good, good, good. <laughs> Yeah, but awesome job, guys. Uh, great discussion, and we will get you back to do a recap, but this is a great episode. We'll cue this up right now. Courtney will get it up for us. Uh, thank you, Courtney, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Awesome.